Thank you, Mrs. Allen. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, when and how does it start your falling in love with jazz music? Well, my dad is a big jazz fan. He uh, always had the music playing in the house, he and my mom. And so we were listening to Charlie Parker, my brother Mount and I, and we were listening to Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan and Modern Jazz Quartet. And so I started to really pay attention to the music, not until a little bit later. I was hearing it, but I was also hearing Motown, which is the music of my generation. So that was on the radio, but uh, my dad is a big influence because that's where I heard uh, jazz for the first time. And normally I don't like to talk about genres because I think it's a matter of individualities, first of all. But remembering the trio you had with Terry Lynn Carrington and Esperanza Spaulding, I'd like to ask you, are there center, certain peculiarities that can be individuating talking about women in jazz? I think this is a very special trio with Terry Lynn and Esperanza. One of my favorite things to do in music. Uh, it's, I consider it a great blessing to play with them. Um, they are great musicians. Uh, just because they've studied hard, they've played with everyone, they have great experiences. So um, when we sit down to play, there's a wide breadth of experiences that they bring that inspire me greatly. In 2013, at the Apollo Theater in New York, as artistic director, you celebrated great jazz women in a big concert. Do you think that the role of women in jazz are under-evaluated somehow? Yes, um, I would say so. I would say that even today, uh, I think in some ways women are still struggling mm -hmm. to find recognition. I think that uh, through the Mosaic Project, Terry Lynn's um, I think brilliant idea to unite women, um, to empower them. I think it's partly that, but it's partly that the women that she brings together are just really great players. Uh, but I think that this is perhaps, and it's hopefully, uh, an inspiration for younger women to see this, to see that it, they work hard at something. They can find the benefits will come back. Uh, as an ethnomusicologist, uh, you have a deep interest in about, about the links and interaction between music and society. Do you think that music, as part of the cultural world, is having the right respect and consideration and resources too? Well, we would love to see um, there be more opportunities for the music to uh, to really get to everyone, especially young people. Uh, we have some, you know, problems with the music in the schools in the United States, where we'd like to see the kinds of opportunities that were available. Mm -hmm to my age group who had access to instruments and could learn very early on which instrument we wanted to play. So we had a, an opportunity to be competitive from an early age. And it would be great to see that continue uh, to, to be reestablished again. Um, the artists being catalysts of emotion and feelings they have also social responsibilities. Uh, they are, are conveys messages, uh, aware of that or not. I think you thought about this theme. Yes, well, we live in some challenging times, and I think the artist definitely is impacted just like every other human being. We have ways that we respond to that through our music, some people more directly, mm. some people more indirectly. But um, music for me is a spiritual vehicle. People like Alice Coltrane and Mary Lou Williams are 
they're uh, great inspirations in that respect that, you know, that music heals. Mm. And so that's what we hope to do when, when we're playing music. That's what I hope to do. Thank you very much, Mrs. Allen. Thank you. Thanks a lot.